Hi everyone, it's Jerry Enchantress. I'm here with another flip through and review of the Tarot Mucha, one of my favorite artists of all time. And I just wanted you to see one of my art pieces that I have of them in the background. So let's take a little zoom in on the Tarot Mucha. This is another one of the decks that I got for Christmas for my daughter, and it's been on my on my wish list for a really long time too. I have been wanting to collect all different art types. You know, I'm I'm very into art and different artistic genres of all types. And I have now a little bit of a connection collection. I have Art Nouveau, which is what Mucha's category is under the Art Nouveau category. And and so that's one of my favorite um, genres of of artwork. Um, I also have Klimt, which is he's an amazing artist, and I also have Salvador Dali, which my daughter gave me, and Starman, which my daughter gave me. So those are some um, beautiful, very specific artwork. Um, some Egyptian art too with the Nefertari. But as far as artist artist names, um, yeah, not not too many. But um, I'm so excited to have Mucha on the list now. I did my own kind of art deck with the pre-Raphaelite um, artists like Waterhouse and and Bogaro and my Flesh Tarot as well. So that was definitely on the top of my list of favorite art styles is is the pre-Raphaelite era and then Mucha and Art Nouveau, another one of my favorite styles. So let's take a look at the Tarot Mucha. The artwork is by Gilia E. Mar Mar Maraglia and Barbara Dorenzo, 78 cards with book. So it's definitely using that style of Mucha and I've even done that too a little bit. I used the Mucha style for different things and even for ads and an art school and so um, I think this one is done very well honestly there is a pre-Raphaelite deck that I I've avoided getting even though I should get it and the the um, the backing of it is really pretty it's just it just uh, it just bothers me a little bit to see the actual pre-Raphaelite artwork changed and and adapted in that in a sort of a way to me that's not quite as appealing as the original. So that's why I made my own original, my own version of it. But but this one looks definitely look like like Mucha would have made this. You know that's what I like about it. It doesn't look like some kind of an adaptation of an art style. This is the actual art style in um of of the Art Nouveau and Mucha style depicting this different tarot. So so let's take a look and look how cute this book is. Nice. Lunea Weatherstone, Massimiliano Filadoro. <laughs> oh my gosh, Los Scar Scarabeo has a lot of people working under them and just an amazing team of different artists and authors. This is an extraordinary tribute to the art of Alphonse Mucha and the tarot masters of the past. I mean, I feel like this could be some actual of his artwork. And just adapted so let's see let's just figure that out for sure for sure before I keep talking but because uh, I recognize it I recognize it it could be like you know digitally altered slightly to help represent the cards better not sure about that oh and as in most Los Garbeo you'll have different languages so this is um it comes in english french usually they say in the beginning yeah english italian spanish french german and russian <laughs> and so yeah the english is up front 
It gives you just sort of the key meanings. Knight of, I, I kind of like what they did there because a lot of uh, Los Scarabeo decks, it'll say cups and then you're like going along and you're like, wait a minute, where was I? Uh, was I at the six of cups or was I at six of, six of pentacles? You know, like just keeping tabs. I actually have to make, make a tab on the Arcanum and the Telemeteros <laughs> because of that. Anyway. So it's good to just have like that little reference picture to help you know where you are. Oh, that's not even a reference picture. See, I, I'm not, <laughs> I don't, yeah, because it's the same, right? It looks the same. Yep. So it's just decoration. There you go. I'm trying to give them more credit than they deserve. Okay. We'll see for ourselves if these pictures are actually actual mucha draw paintings or if they're mucha esque. I think I'll be able to tell the difference. And some spreads. The flowers. Okay. And nature gazing back period of optimism I just opened this so I hadn't ha haven't had a chance to to see it before I make a video So, Mucha Tarot is more than just an artistic reinterpretation of the usual tarot figures. Mucha won his initial fame by creating a theater poster that placed the central figure in a haloed frame, evocative of a saint rather than earthly actress. Graceful ornaments that recalled icons turned prosaic poster into an image of the divine. It is this quality of being imbued with deeper meaning that makes this his style particularly well suited for the tarot. Beyond being merely decorative, Mitch's work inspires an emotional response. That is true. Interpreting the tarot according to the principles of composition and style of Mitch's works gives them a new perspective and clarity. The aesthetic vision in this sense becomes a true reading method where each object depicted in the cards, the floral pattern of a dress and the decoration of a cup and the sinuous arabesque requires its own unique voice. The eye follows the fluidity of the lines, admiring the arc of a wave or the curve of a throat. Okay, well that, that helps. <laughs> I like that explanation. All right, so I am anxious to see this now. And as in all of those Los Scarabeo decks, you get these extra cards. Look how pretty, though. That's nice. Tools for Spiritual Journey with Tarot Sophie. Tarot Association Worldwide. I do, uh, I do follow Los Scarabeo on Facebook. I'm not sure if I have I'm following the Tarot Association or not. <laughs> but yeah, it's fun to get like behind the scenes stuff. I like Liz Garbeo's work. Most of the time, I mean sometimes there's the decks aren't as ex as as nice and, and the packaging is not as nice, but generally speaking, Liz Garbeo has nice decks. Okay, let's start. They're a little bit sticky together. And they're a little bit shiny and they're a little bit thicker too than they're kind of thick nice though sturdy so here we have the full how pretty very pretty and the magician and the high priestess The Empress, 
Let's see if I, how good I am at remembering all of these. The Emperor. The Hierophant. The Lovers. The Chariot. Strength, the Hermit, I like the Hermit a lot, I think this is an actual art piece, I've seen that before, but I mean, maybe all of them are, I don't know, it could be, couldn't really get to that point, but I think, I think, you know, the majority of them are, the Wheel, Justice. Hanged man. I like these. These are pretty. Death. Temperance. The devil. Tower, star, and the moon. You know, you can hear them kind of like the sun. <laughs> All right, let's. Okay, and the um, judgment. And the world. Okay, let's look at now. First suit up on this deck is Cups. Ace of Cups. Two of Cups. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. <laughs> Excuse me, flower. Five of cups. So as you can see, the wording is not on these. You have to just know the major arcana and at least, you know, this this cup symbol is very predominant. You know, you can see it and then you just have numbers to match. So that could be a little bit, not so much challenging, but you know, it gives, it just, uh, it's not exactly conducive like to new, to people who are just starting off. They, it, I think it's helpful to have words for people who are new to tarot. We have a Seven of Cups. The Eight of Cups. Okay. Are you okay? And my cat, I think she's like, where did everybody go? Nine of cups. Ten of cups. And a page of cups. He's got a fish in his cup. I like that. <laughs> and knight of cups. Queen of cups. King of cups. All right, let's get into pentacles, but first let me see what the cat needs. Okay, let's do pentacles now. Pentacles, ace of pentacles. Two of pentacles. Three of pentacles. Four of pentacles. Five of Pentacles. That's very dramatic. <laughs> really feel their pain. Six of Pentacles. Well, this is a different kind of Six of Pentacles. Kind of, um, you know, this showing off of your fortune. Not being really that charitable. <laughs> but 
still sharing seven of pentacles i like that eight of pentacles nine of pentacles it's so pretty and ten of pentacles page pentacles Okay, this knight looks a little weird, but I guess that's just his, le he's like leaning back and looking over his shoulder. That's an interesting view. I've really never seen a knight looking like that before. But the knight of pentacles, interesting. And the queen of pentacles. And the king of pentacles. Okay, and next up we have the wands. Ace of Wands, Two of Wands, Three of Wands, Four of Wands. I love that. That's definitely a Four of Wands. <laughs> Five of Wands. Much more traditional than my fairy deck <laughs> that I just reviewed. Six of Wands, very nice. Seven of Wands. Eight of Wands. Nine of Wands. Ten of Wands. Pretty. Page. And let's see these. Okay, so the page is going to be like a little helmet, and the knight is going to be the horse. That's hard. That's like one of the hardest things to differentiate in some of the Los Garbeo decks. They do that, but I, you know, and I have a feel like this now, so now I know. Knight. Queen. And... King of Wands with the salamanders and everything. <laughs> okay, so let's now do the swords. Ace of Swords. These are just a little thicker. Like I don't know how to describe them. It's, this thickness is, reminds me of a more of an oracle deck a little bit. What oracle does this remind me of? I'm not sure. But it, I like it. It's okay. It's good. Three of of uh, swords. Four of swords. Five of swords. Six of swords. Seven of swords. Eight of swords. Nine of swords. Ooh, look at that Ten of Swords. That's interesting. That has a, a big story to it. I wonder what, what the interpretation in the book says. Let's see. Discs. Did we already? Yeah. They're called discs in this pentacles are. Okay, swords. Here we go. Ten of swords. The battle is over. It's time to bury the dead, heal the wounded, and make peace in all the ways that peace needs to be made. This is a time of sorrow as well as relief. The harshness and violence of the conflict will not be swept away soon. All that can be done is to pick up the pieces and carry on, for to do anything else would be a defeat to the soul that could not be born. <laughs> the key ideas are the ruin of an enterprise, cutting your losses, recovering from shock and defeats. Okay, 
um, and let me, I just want to see the difference between their death uh, explanation and because I always like to listen to the difference. And then the death is a long vigil ends at sunrise and the knight who has undergone the ordeal lies naked and seemingly dead. His sword has been held in the position of a priest for no worldly weapon can be used when the enemy is death itself. Setting aside the trappings of his mortal life, the knight offered himself on the altar of ultimate sacrifice to die to his old self and be reborn, purified, worthy of sacred, sacred service. Will death claim the knight for his own or set his feet back on his path of mortality? To truly be transformed, it must not matter. Acceptance of endings is demanded, whether a lot of life itself or merely one role in that lifetime. Something that is finished must be released. The new day is dawning. Release what no longer serves. The end of a part of life. Rebirth into a new self or situation. Yeah, they're so similar and diff yeah, different. You know, the... The Ten of Swords and Death card, just, I've always wanted to, and then even, you know, Judgment has a, a feel, uh, so I'll let you look at that image that I was just describing. See, it's like... This does, does still have like, but they've got the two pillars and a lot of time the Ten of Swords, of course, is the swords in the person's back and then, the, you know, sun in the horizon. And we have sun in the horizon here too. It's interesting, very interesting. They're very similar, but different, you know. All right, I don't know why I focus on that sometimes. I guess because I'm a Scorpio. All right, so let's finish up here. We've got the Knight of Swords. Ooh, or the Page of Swords, Knight of Swords. That, he's cool looking. And Queen of Swords and the King of Swords. Look at that smug face. I like the butterflies on this throne. Definitely going to incorporate butterflies in my swords whenever I do my own deck. All right, let's see now how this shuffles. It feels thicker because, oh yeah, because it's, uh, because they are thicker. And, but they're all slippery, but not bendy. <laughs> not very bendy, just saying, not bendy, very stiff. I guess that's a good thing for, you know, long lasting. And also, if you want to, if you're a collector and you're not, you're not really looking to use these too much, you know, for. So you've got the page. Oh, because he was he's jumping out at me for some reason. The page of wands. Yeah, some some of you might just want this as a collector's item, and it's a very nice, sturdy, long with longevity type of <laughs> collector's item. But for those of you who want to use it. On a daily basis you probably have to use it a lot to break it in all right let's see about this wands staves is staves the same as wands yes okay the page of staves so the Knave of Swords is a thoughtful and so it's got two in the names, you know, like the it's the the suit in here is called Staves. Oh no, there's swords. No, okay, so we don't want swords. See staves. So Okay, Knave of Staves, that's what we want. Has great creative potential, but not quite decided yet where to put his energy. 
He is inclined to burst of enthusiasm rather than a sustained effort toward a goal. Given guidance and support, he will come to realize his gifts and use them wisely. Too much direction, however, will inhibit his genius as it grows into its full power. Allow him to make mistakes and fail if needed. If this card does not represent a person, it can mean taking on it can mean taking on a new role or starting a new artistic endeavor. So this is interesting because some of you might resonate with this card because maybe you have a child in your life, um, whether it's male or female, and you're just trying to figure out the best way to guide them. <laughs> and this resonates with me, so thank you universe for this um, help here because that's exactly what I needed to know. <clears throat> I just want to know, I, I have quite a genius child in my hands, but they're doing, they're behaving kind of, well, you know, not traditionally or inconsistently to norms, I suppose, but to me, it's never bothered me, but sometimes other people feel funny about the way certain people approach things. And I feel like I'm doing the right thing by letting them make their own choices and make their own mistakes, you know? Anyway, and I think I am. So thank you, Spirit, for letting me know. <laughs> and if anybody else out there has those kind of issues, sometimes that's just the best way for for anyone to learn, even if it's not a child, you know? Anyone, lots of people need to make their mistakes in order to learn and grow and progress, even you and even me. All right, so that's part of our learning processes. I feel like the pages represent communication, which is a big thing in, in that last deck that I reviewed. And, and here we go again with communication. Communication is very important, but also the pages represent youth and represent students in learning. So that's, that's definitely um, a good way to grow, to get past that phase of stagnation is is to learn something new and keep growing and learning all right well i hope you guys like that faith just a pixie dust